We've all seen the devastating effects that the war in Ukraine has had on so many. Thousands of people have been killed and millions have been displaced from their homes. Amongst those who have been displaced are tens of thousands of Jews from Ukraine who are taking shelter in many countries throughout Europe. Wanting to get a first-hand understanding of the situation, I hopped on a plane to Romania to meet some of these Jewish refugees and the Chabad rabbi who's looking after them. At the very last minute, I reached out to my friends at Mint Capital and asked them if they'd be interested in sweetening the lives of these Jewish refugees. Of course, they said yes. So I ran to my local supermarket and pretty much emptied out their entire chocolate aisle. Now it was time to fly. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Romania. So I've seen a lot of small airports in my day, but this one takes the cake. You come in from that door, here's the bags, and then you go right out that door. So this one is tiny, tiny, tiny. So I'm here in the car with Rabbi Shalom Gopin. Shalom Gopin from? From Lugansk, Kiev, Yasi today. So <laughs> Lugansk is in Ukraine. Yeah. And the Rabbi is here. I noticed his license plate is also from Ukraine. So you drove the car? Yeah, sure, yeah. From Ukraine to here. When did you run away from Ukraine? I got there two weeks ago. We have arrived at this hotel compound. What's interesting is that a lot of these cars parked here are from Ukraine. So this one has a Ukraine license plate. That one is a Ukraine license plate. And this one is a Ukraine license plate. People literally took what they could, got into the cars and ran. And they made it here. The rabbi has a similar story that he's going to tell us later. We'll get to that. One thing I want to be very clear about is that I don't want to get into the politics of this war and what's going on between Russia and Ukraine. That's not what I'm here to do. I want to show you the human side. I want to show you the people, the regular people, who are being affected by what's happening. Now we're at this place. I'm, I understand it's a kind of hotel or resort. And this is where the refugees, some of them, are staying. The rabbi is putting them up here. So how many people are here, Rabbi? Night, night, six, 50, 60 people. I cannot 50 or sure. 60 people. He doesn't know exactly because, because every day is changing. People are coming yeah. and going. Yeah. Let's see what's happening here. Inside the ballroom, I met men, women, and children who were just sitting there bored, trying to pass time. I also met two Romanian non-Jewish people who came to help with cooking and preparing food. The rabbi then took me to another ballroom where there was some extra food, but the rabbi said they would run out within a few days. Our next stop was a makeshift synagogue on the hotel property, complete with a Torah scroll brought along from Ukraine so that the Jews can pray. We then met with a Jewish couple along with their married daughter and her baby, who until a couple weeks ago were living a very elegant life in Ukraine, but now they were refugees in Romania like everyone else. They sat down to tell me their story, and the amount of hardships they'd gone through in the past few weeks was simply unfathomable. When the war started, they ran from their home in Kiev to their summer home outside of the city. But soon, the fighting followed them outside of the city, and they were left with no electricity and no running water. They were forced to go outside and look for firewood to heat their home and to melt snow for drinking water. Okay, so a family just showed up, new refugees, in the house, and they brought dogs. B9. I you put this family? B9? Yeah. Okay. I give you the paper, right? On. So, um, can I ask you what your name is? My name is Irina. Irina, and this is? Yava. Yava. And you guys came from where? From Zaporizhia. Zaporizhia. 800. 800. 800 kilometers. Wow. So, um, was, there, was there bombing in your city? Yeah. Yes. So you were there then? Yes. Yeah. What was it like? Scary. Scary. Yeah, I could imagine. 
So you just, how did you get to Romania? We uh, uh, sit in the uh, car. How many days have you been traveling? Uh, about a week. About wow. a week, the, 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 uh, nine March. Now for the first time in a bunch of days, you're going to be relaxing and yeah. settling down. That's wonderful. And you brought the dogs with you? Yes. So the, three dogs. <laughs> three dogs. Three so dogs. Who, this is, what's her name? Or his? Pixie. Pixie. Pixie is the mother? No, no, no. no. Oh. Mother Ooh. here. This is the it's mother? Sherry. 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 Where's the other one? Oh my goodness, that is a cute This person. is his son, <laughs> Atom, Tommy. And they're all, they all ran away with you? Yes. yes. Were, were the dogs afraid when they heard the bombs? Yeah. Okay, so please go, go inside and Thank make you. yourself comfortable. Thank you. I then met a young man named Mark who told me about his family's escape from the city of Sumy in Ukraine. When I asked him how long he thought his family would be homeless for, this is what he said. Do you think you're ever going to be able to go home? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. When? Uh, when? No, not tomorrow, uh, but uh, maybe... Um, mm, Till year or two. A year or two? No. How did you find out that you can come here? Um, our uh, our rebel uh, said that uh, we need to come here to sleep. Oh, and cool. Rest. So, so one second. So the rabbi from your city yeah, told yeah. you that you can come here, and yeah. there's another rabbi who's going to take care of you. Uh, yeah. The longer I stayed, the more people I met who were all stuck in the same situation. Young and old, it didn't matter. They had all run away from the war in Ukraine and they were in a strange land, not knowing when they could go home. As dinner was being served, I took a look around the room and thought about the refugees and their plight. How badly they must have wanted to be eating dinner in their own homes. I marveled at the fact that many of these people are being taken care of by a rabbi who they didn't even know existed only a few days ago. In assuring that every one of these refugees has a warm bed to sleep in and a hot meal every day is no easy task. But the rabbi is doing it all with a smile. So we're going to be handing out chocolate. Thank you, Mint Capital, for sending the chocolate. 